I was in Saudi Arabia and uh, one of the sheikhs came over to see me and they said, oh, Anthony, I, I saw you on TV and you were saying that Bitcoin is like digital gold. And I said, yes, sir. He says, oh, well, let me tell you something. It's better than gold. And let me tell you why. He says, right now I'm in good graces with the crown prince and the king. There's no bone saw in my future. He said, but if there should come a day where I'm in bad graces with these people, I have $300 million on a USB uh, and I can put that somewhere on my body or stick it where the sun doesn't shine and cross the Yemeni border or get out on get out of here on a boat with my money. You can't do that with gold. Anthony Scaramucci, the founder and managing partner of Skybridge Capital, an alternative asset manager and investment advisor, has exceedingly bullish and high expectations for Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap. A former White House communications director, Anthony views Bitcoin as a potential hedge against rising inflation and the United States' staggering $34 trillion national debt. He emphasizes that Bitcoin is one of the few assets immune to inflation and central banks' rapid devaluation of fiat currencies. In an October interview with Benzinga, Anthony, who has invested several hundred million dollars in cryptocurrency, stated, If you have higher demand for gold, we'll build more mines. Bitcoin has a finite supply. In a more recent video with David Lin, Anthony draws more parallels between gold and Bitcoin. Though both assets are often classified as similar, they are worlds apart. Bitcoin is the world's leading digital asset, the foundation of the digital revolution, gripping every part of the global finance industry. Anthony is particularly optimistic about spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETFs, which he believes will continue to attract the interest of institutional investors managing tens of trillions of dollars. He draws a parallel to the SPDR Gold Trust ETF, noting how gold prices surged following its approval and launch. Anthony expects Bitcoin to follow a similar trajectory, predicting its price could soar to $250,000 when the Bitcoin ETFs secure $100 billion in investments. We will now bring you clips from Anthony's recent interview with David Lin. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos on Bitcoin and other digital assets. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy. You have to start out with the following premise. Uh, in the digital world, would human beings accept a store of value in the digital world? And then the secondary argument is if, and the answer would be yes, if it followed all of the typical things that human beings have looked for, for store of value, scarcity, uh, easy to use, uh, trustworthy, where we can pass it between ourselves and know that the value stays stable. And so for 5,000 years, we used gold, a group of people, uh, I think it was more than just one, Satoshi Nakamoto's computer programming team invented a coding system, a software, where we could eventually have this decentralized database. And a result of this decentralized ba database, we could have a uh, link, if you will, to each other uh, permissionless. And so putting it very simply, I can spend money with you over this network uh, without having to get a third party involved. And so those things are incredibly unique. It's an incredibly unique technology. And it was invented about 15 years ago. And as people started to adopt and understand the technology, it grew. I'm in the process of finishing up a book right now for John Wiley. It's, it's called The uh, Little Book of Bitcoin. What Wall Street already knows, but you need to know. And Wall Street's figured this out. They filed for these ETFs, uh, and they're selling these ETFs as a potential additional store of value akin to gold. And so, yes, uh, this is a nascent asset. It only has 5% adoption in the United States. Uh, if it continues to scale and adopt at the same speed of the last 10 years, there's no reason why this can't be a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar asset. And so putting into the context for your listeners and viewers, uh, if gold's at sixteen trillion dollars, Bitcoin's at one and a half trillion dollars, could Bitcoin 10x in the next 15 years? Uh, I believe it can. And I and I believe it has the 
properties, the technical properties to allow it to do that. And we're already seeing that happen. It's already manifesting in that direction. And right now, Bitcoin is still tracking like a technology asset. It's it's tracking NVIDIA. It's tracking what we would, we've typically been calling the Magnificent 7 or the Super 6, these uh, tech stocks like Amazon, Google, NVIDIA, Facebook, Apple, that sort of thing. And so, yes, it's tracking that for right now. It hasn't fully matured. Once it fully matures, it'll start to have correlated properties of gold. Uh, but yeah, you cut rates. Uh, you're going to expand the breadth of equity leadership in the markets. If a rate cut goes into place, you'll, you'll, you'll certainly provide some relief in the real estate market, especially here in the United States. And I have maintained uh, that you're going to see at least three rate cuts from the Fed this year. Uh, there was about a two-month period of time where Wall Street is now saying little to no rate cuts, lots of jawboning and moral suasion from the Fed in terms of what their inclinations are. But I don't really think they have a choice. So they'll cut rates. They don't want the economy to overly weaken. They're staring down the barrel of huge interest rate expenses here in the United States for U.S. debt. And inflation numbers are trending down. During the discussion with Lynn, Scaramucci discusses shifting political dynamics in the United States, especially regarding cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. In 2021, popular on-chain Bitcoin analyst Willie made a prediction about Bitcoin on Twitter. He wrote, In the next three years, shitting on Bitcoin will be political suicide. As expected, the prediction received a lot of criticism. One of the numerous negative comments under the post reads, my man, you are really living in an echo chamber. For the next three years, supporting Bitcoin is political suicide for 50% of the population and growing. Supporting Bitcoin is becoming the new smoking. Another poster predicted that it would take at least 100 years before crypto could become a widely debated political topic. How wrong these estimates were. Several US presidential candidates, including former President Donald Trump, have publicly endorsed Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Even Democrats, who previously showed a strong dislike for cryptocurrencies, are crossing party lines to vote for crypto-friendly policies. As many pro-crypto personalities have pointed out, politicians are finally realizing how strongly people feel about cryptocurrencies. This is not a passing fad or a topic people are only mildly interested in. It's about financial freedom, and everyone who realizes the gravity of the situation will do everything to ensure their voices are heard and their interests are taken into consideration by every elected representative. Uber was hated by the government. Uh, government regulators did not want Uber. Uh, mayors in local cities and large cities didn't want Uber. But the people wanted Uber. I think it's, it's impossible, you know. If you go to Google and you look up how many people in the United States own crypto, there's different numbers up there. Some are saying 50 million, some are saying 90 million, but let's just say it's 80 million. 65 million people, David, own dogs in the United States. If you're there and you see it, you don't want to miss it. And so if you've got 80 million people owning it, let's say 1% of them is 80, 800,000 of them. And they're in the following swing states, Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, et cetera, you know, what are you going to do, David? You know, you, you, you're you going to lose the election. So I think uh, the Biden team, they vetoed this bill last week, but they did get the uh, Ethereum stuff passed despite Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler not wanting it. So I think they're going to pivot. They just pivoted on the border. They just signed uh, executive orders to stop the flow of people and traffic at the border. Uh, and I think they're going to pivot now on Bitcoin and and crypto assets. I don't think Biden, who is a moderate, I don't think he wants to be left out in the dark on this. I mean, you don't want to lose it. I mean, you, this is a razor thin election. And I don't think Joe Biden wants to lose this election because of the capricious whims of Elizabeth Warren or Gary Gensler. I understand why people own gold. I understand the 5,000 year human commitment to gold, but it's just not as user friendly. It's not as transportable as Bitcoin. And, you know, I'll say this to you. I mean, it's a little graphic, but I'll share it with you. I was in Saudi Arabia and uh, one of the sheikhs came over to see me and they said, oh, Anthony, I, I saw you on TV and you were saying that Bitcoin 
is like digital gold. And I said, yes, sir. He says, oh, well, let me tell you something. It's better than gold. And let me tell you why. He says, right now I'm in good graces with the crown prince and the king. There's no bone saw in my future. He said, but if there should come a day where I'm in bad graces with these people, I have $300 million on a USB uh, and I can put that somewhere on my body or stick it where the sun doesn't shine and cross the Yemeni border or get out on get out of here on a boat with my money. You can't do that with gold. Make sure you tell people that on television. So as cryptocurrencies become a bigger issue during the election, more Democrats will cross party lines to show their support for cryptocurrencies. Trump is really milking the issue to gain as many new voters as possible. And by all indications, he is achieving his aim. Though some people are skeptical about how much sway being a pro-crypto candidate will hold, it is evident that cryptocurrency investors are ready to push back with all it takes until politicians realize the severity of the situation. Please share your thoughts on Anthony Scaramucci's interview in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.